Hello, Gemini. Welcome to Catalyst Energies and welcome to your full moon astrology forecast. This is a report that is for Gemini rising, Gemini moon, Gemini sun, and we are going to be looking at the waning moon phase. So we're going to look at post full moon up to the next new moon, which is on March 2nd. It is at 12 to 13 degrees Pisces. And uh, Gemini, are you, how is it feeling for you? I'm just looking at your chart here at the full moon. Um, it did happen yesterday on the 16th, but there's so much information about this full moon that I've already covered that I'm linking the Aquarius new moon report for you and the Pleiadian revival is in the description box below. So if you need context, you want to do a retrospective because this full moon quite, quite simply Gemini, um, in, in standard, um, in, in an area that is so standard for Gemini, which is your third house, um, the full moon really is, um, a moment of realization and experience of how one is feeling, especially the Gemini, um, about the full range of potential in the realm of the mind, of learning, of language, of thoughts and ideas and communication, right? The third house is you know, the structure of your nervous system and how you interact with the world around you. Basically, is your consciousness, your individual consciousness is emotionally able to hold the uh, intensity of energy that is stored up as a result of identifying with a certain set of beliefs, with a certain understanding, right? With a certain wisdom, the ninth house, this extends to religions, to philosophies, to advanced training, to um, higher education, like graduate school, um, your dissertation, those types of things, foreign travel, mystical travel. It is a much broader picture and value system of meaning in the ninth house that the Gemini person has been identifying with, I would say, since, you know, since the sun's been in Aquarius. And at this full moon, this very Pleiadian, very galactic full moon that's in a grand square with the nodes, um, has your belief systems and the larger cultural context that you've identified with, um, are your emotions able to handle and your feelings and sensitivity to the information is, are you able to hold it? Right. Is, is your mind strong enough? Is your <clears throat> emotional capacity um, strong enough to hold this very exciting potential, right? We're all at the crest of this roller coaster. And at the moment of the full moon is like, Hmm, is this, um, <clears throat> Can I emotionally handle the thrill, excitement, and the, the terror of going over and knowing there's no going back, right? So for Gemini, I mean, it should be a no-brainer in terms of, you know, the mind, but there are lots of challenges. And I'd say that the, 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 the realm of the astral and of the woo and of the fabric of reality itself, you know, the 12th house of the transcendental spiritual um, experience has been the is is a point of concern for you gemini not concern necessarily but this is where the awakening is happening for you is in a realm that is um really um n has nothing to do with the mind <laughs> or ideas uh, very mutable because the 12th house is a pisces house um and that is a mutable sign just like gemini but ultimately um i think that it's going to be um, <clears throat> the the placement of Saturn in your ninth house and how Mercury, your ruler, is soon going to meet Saturn over the course of these two weeks in the belief systems. Uh, uh, is your own mind able to handle the 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 meaning and the understanding that you have identified with yourself yourself with over the past couple of weeks, especially since this is the area of the new moon. It are your belief systems and religion and value systems and philosophies? Um, is the instrumentation of that right? Is it is your cauldron able to hold the uh, the um, boiling water without cracking. Um, and this is where the full moon shows you that. And specifically in your own mind, um, the actual 
information and data that you uh, work with on a daily basis. So um, Gemini, you this you think that this is something that you can um, do, but remember, we're talking about your emotions. And so when the moon comes into Sagittarius for the third quarter, this is where the real challenge steps in. The full moon is just like, hey, I'm here. Your full emotional landscape is visible um, in a way and accessible in a way that it usually isn't. And there's no, there's no um, half of it that is dark, right? There's no distortion necessarily. It is fully illuminated. And so it's going to be challenged when the moon comes into Sagittarius because it's going to square the sun that's then moving into your 10th house. So the conversation for Gemini in general is going to start really shifting into um, these areas that have to do with the sociopolitical order, your career. Um, and that is getting stronger and stronger, especially as a spiritual type of career because um, of Neptune being here for years, which has made um, it a very broad, um, humanitarian, um, very mystical um, and experience expansive, um, you know, realm of career and contribution and ambition. It's kind of hard to have ambition necessarily with Neptune because all boundaries go out the window with Neptune and Pisces. It all goes back to source. But Jupiter's here now. So at least there's some management of this pure spiritual experience at this level. And now that the sun is going to come in after this full moon, I mean, your belief systems and the meaning collectively that you operate within is directly affecting your goals and ambitions. And so as the sun comes into the area of your goals and ambitions, Gemini, um, you will start to really identify yourself with your goals and ambitions and also be able to manage, have expansive resources in this area. And of course, Neptune giving it the pure spiritual context um, that it that it's always had as long as Neptune has been here. So um, the thing is, Gemini, um, that requires some uh, surrender, right? These are naturally in square to each other, the first and the 10th house, because you're giving yourself over to something bigger than you. Um, and this is going to be really tested when the moon comes into Sagittarius for you. So this is the full moon. Like I said, there's plenty of data and content that leads up to this point that you can take the time to review so we can look at what's ahead now um, so that we can see what um, where the challenges are really going to like set themselves up so let's go this week ahead and look at and you know I do the dailies um, and those are still available publicly and we go over the daily astrology and we look at intuitive reading so all of this information is something that can be um, looked at more closely as we go through it but these are just the general themes right now that I'm seeing so the moon comes into the seventh house of Sag which is your opposite sign and um, we gather a lot of inner strength with a moon in Sagittarius just in general because the meaning of our relationships and the action that it motivates um, is a place we can really draw inner strength because it's not just us isolated. It's something more than us that we are acting on. So when the moon is in the seventh house, we tend to become more sensitive to our partnerships, the dynamics of our partnerships, the shifting in our partners, um, and sensitive to the whole of the contract and if it's balanced or not. And for Gemini coming into Sagittarius, there is, um, you know, interestingly, um, a real gathering together of inner strength in your relationships by working together. This is a real teamwork oriented moment here, um, which I think is, is really says something about it, it's a really good thing for Gemini. Let's put it that way, because it does require having to commit to some sort of creative action, um, which is kind of difficult for Gemini, not that they can't commit or be creative, but the realm of Gemini is the endless expansion of ideas that is infinite, right? You have to, you have to let go of that when you come into commitment and uh, creative transformation. But the moon here, I mean, you're going to really feel this 
draw to gather your emotional strength from your relationships and from working together in your relationships. What's going to be in your personal relationships and the form of those relationships. It's going to be the square to the sun that makes it clear that the full emotional story is not illuminated and but the sun still is and it's very much now having you identify with your career I mean this could very easily translate to some serious like problems between your relationships and your career your mission right very simply and um, again, th what's interesting here is that the full moon was right at, you know, in the area of your immediate environment and your language and your expression and your mental faculties and your learning. And so um, when you are looking for this inner, um, this inner strength and, uh, acknowledging that half of the emotional picture is not not illuminated um it's going to be very uh very interesting because uh I, I i feel like that this is the knowledge that you come to be filled with with the full moon the application of that knowledge is expressed in the seventh house just naturally um and there's not going to be a full emotional exp um, awareness of <clears throat> of that and a lot of that is because the sun is going to have you focus not on knowledge but on act on, on on the unfolding of material resources right um it's like I said, it could very easily translate to a lot of tension um, in terms of your emotional um, experience of your relationships and your identity with just the larger uh, your career or your mission or your goals. Oh my gosh, your goals. I can really feel that Gemini might be having some relational issues, maybe, in especially um, here because you if you were really excited about all of the knowledge that um, accumulated at this full moon um, and in your fields, you may feel very, um, very uh, strongly motivated to apply that to your relationships. And maybe um, that's not enough, right? And, and you're feeling such a strong identification with the career or the goals in general. Um, and maybe somebody in your relationship is not um, feeling like you're being a team player or maybe there's something, <laughs> man, I don't know what it is, Gemini, but I could see this really coming out for you in the next two weeks. So um, while this is happening, your ruler, by the way, um, Mercury is coming out of its post retrograde shadow. So while this is happening, the square with the sun and the moon, this crisis point that we're all going to go through Mercury is first is in a sextile to Chiron. So Gemini, I mean, the, the, the big wound of self and the shame and guilt of having a healthy ego and, and acting in our own, on our own instinct and our self-interest in a healthy way. I mean, this is being brought out in society in general for you. And I think that there has been a lot of closing yourself off from society or your social environment or being part of something as a whole, because it's too painful because there's just been too much, you know, um, or, or it's eliciting some sort of old story when you interact with your social environment as a whole. If you go out into society, right? Somebody the other day was uh, said something on the live stream about like it's too peopley out there, and I, and and they're not a Gemini, but it's I get that vibe with Chiron in general, and it will be here for a number of years. So it's going to be the social environment as a whole. There's going to be the biggest challenge for your personal healing um, and letting go of old stories of uh, who you've been and and stepping into the potential of who you can be with a healthy a healthy ego. So Mercury, your ruler, um, if if the mind can find some stillness in terms of belief systems and doctrines, right? And, and advanced knowledge or, or mystical travel. Like if you can find stillness in this realm in order to be directly inspired, inspired, right? And to gain some sort of knowledge or insight. I feel like that it's there's the connection between value systems and the condition of 
society in general, um, I feel like that there will be some letting go of old stories, right? When you tap into the um, essence of what you believe, um, rather than getting disturbed by the wave function of all of these belief systems, when you're able to settle into and resonate with the frequency or the bandwidth of value or belief that you, um, really want to be aligned with, especially because Mercury is your ruler. That's, I think it's really going to help, um, dissipate stories that have nothing to do with you and may be old. They may not even be related to the environment that you're in. Maybe they're stories that, um, you, that were part of some other past situation, but they come back in and in impacting your ability, um, to be engaged in your social life in general. Um, there's a lot of different ways this can happen, but Mercury and your ability to calm and still your mind in the context of understanding is going to, I think, allow, like I said, to burn away some of these old identities and really come into a sense of um, who you actually, you know, are in the social environment you want to be in. There'll be a matched frequency and it'll, it'll kind of blast away all of these old identities that don't even, you know, they aren't even relevant to where you are now. Right. But it's going to take this, um, still mind in this moment to do it, which might be a little difficult with this moon in Sag squaring the sun, right? There may be, there may be some, there may be some emotional issues in your relationships that is, um, going to perturb the, you know, the value and belief system you're operating under. So again, still mind letting go of some of these, um, you know, letting go of these old stories and the moon will come in to a trine with Chiron, you know, right after this. And so again, and there may be another potential healing moment with your partners as well, whatever, whoever your partners are, um, in whatever context you're talking about. But this time frame in general for everybody is going to be incredibly difficult. But I see for Gemini, it, um, this third quarter moon, this crisis point, um, um, really bringing up some relational issues and, and pulling you off balance in some ways, um, but also an opportunity to really heal um, old stories with your partners um, or with what you're experiencing with them. So let's see, then let's move forward actually to the actual new moon in Pisces. So you can see what we are working with here because um, you have this potential right now leading up to this point, um, you know, we set intentions with this lunar cycle that we're still in to fine tune the instrumentation that will really measure the change and fluctuation and, um, change in pressure in the social environment. Um, and for you, that's your belief systems. And is your belief system able to actually, um, and hold the amount of energy coming through the ideas that are generated for you, Gemini. So by the time we get to here, Mercury, your ruler meets Saturn at this point, and we get, to, you have to take that energy regardless and put it towards some sort of damage control. So there will be this maturity and this like authority in terms of the mind and expression and communication that, uh, is going to be, you know, met with, with Saturn. So it's, it's going to be very grounding, but also very sobering, um, when it comes to these belief systems, but it's going to be in a way that, um, challenges and you to, um, gather all of the resources of your belief systems so that you can do damage control in some way, right? I, I don't know what that's going to be. Um, but it's going to be damage control in terms of advanced knowledge and, um, belief systems. And at that point, at the same time, this new moon, it's a galactic new moon. It's related to the Syrian star seeds. Um, Jupiter is conjunct with it. This is all 10th house. I mean, the possibility Gemini for you stepping into a consecrated role as a symbol of spiritual courage and, um, true vision and being a real symbol of it and, and initiating, um, the process of becoming this over the course of March. Um, in your career is substantial, um, and is very much part of your, uh, 
journeys it through the quantum realm, right? Because this is, you know, there's no stability here in this area of the 12th house. But at the same time, it's what is stability when there's no boundaries or walls or, or limitations, right? There, um, is there actually uh, stability in this area? I don't know. But what I will say is that um, uh, it's it's this sextile between this new moon that um, in March that's going to, um, you know, it's not going to necessarily solidify, but maybe you'll be able to like settle on this one distinct uh, role that you can play to give you, um, you know, as, as the means for your own awakening, right? It's a, it's a sextile. So there is like a descending, descending of the spiritual and the ascending of the material in order to activate something. And, um, this is very material and this is very spiritual. So, uh, maybe what we find here is that, um, there has been a, a, a myriad of options presented to you at, from a spiritual and karmic um, perspective that has not been very settled, but also too, you can, what that is going to allow for is you finally to, you know, if you had made any kind of like, um, come to any conclusion, or if you've been settled in any way, maybe you, the path wouldn't have stayed open for you to then step into this very, um, symbolic role in a, in a very public way, right? As this is very much like setting the tone for becoming a, like, a Christ-like avatar in your public life in, or a symbol of something in your professional life or your career or just in the socio-political realm in general. Very uh, significant to have all of this here, Gemini. And um, it's opening doorways and this is opening doorways um, or keeping doorways opened that um, you may not have... Um, what you would not, you may not have, um, walked into these doorways had they not been kept open through just, just this constant upheaval of your, um, the spiritual realm, right. That's never settled there. So that's, I think that's very interesting. And what you'll find too, is that black moon Lilith is trying to this new moon in March and it's going to be in conjunction with Sirius almost directly. And so, um, you are completely, um, grounded and the medium of your own growth, right? The soil and the value and the wealth of your own self is, is, is timeless and it is infinite. And it is a space that is, um, it's, it's like a black sun, right? And, and Sirius too is, you know, the Syrian star seeds are the energy workers and the shamans, right? And the healers in that way, they are the sorcerers. They are the ones that know how to utilize the natural technology of life in order to protect and to be a guardian. And so you have a guardian energy here in your very value system. So I feel like too, that you won't be completely pulled into, um, I mean, look at everything for you, Gemini. It's all at the top of your chart. It's all about your relationship to other. We haven't even gotten into Venus and Venus and Mars yet, um, in a conjunction. And then also, um, making that connection also to Neptune. That's something in the power dynamics of your relationships is not only about to be released, but a recompense and a rebalancing that will open up resources and swell to your career. So even if there's agitation, and something is up in your relationship around the end of February, the 23rd, 24th, just know that at the same time, um, something in the power dynamics of those relationships or past relationships is rebalancing and is opening up resources for your professional life in some way or your career. Um, and, and you are so rooted into the very, um, nature of who you are in this second house with, with black moon Lilith here, that you are emotionally, um, as well as physically grounded. So you can step into this role in a professional way. It, it's very shamanic for the Gemini, um, in a very, uh, like I said, very public way. Um, and 
as a, as a public symbol in particular. So this has a lot of ways it could um, express itself. So I'm curious to see how it unfolds for you, Gemini. Um, let's see what we got on time here. Um, if there's anything else, oops, sorry guys, anything else to discuss for you, Gemini, I guess, um, yeah, I guess the biggest thing would be, you know, Mercury is your ruler. So paying attention to what it's doing, what's going on in Aquarius, your belief systems, your ability to locate patterns in, um, uh, in, in, or to utilize, um, the knowledge into some sort of pattern or to offer it into some sort of pattern, if that makes sense with Mercury, right? Mercury is working with the details in themselves, the knowledge of themselves. And the full moon again is showing how, you know, your feelings around all of the knowledge. Um, and your ruler Mercury is, um, uh, applying a lot of that in a very, um, very Gemini type of way, thankfully, because Mercury is an Aquarius. So a very mental and in intellectual way, applying that knowledge that may have been only felt at the time of the full moon, at least now applying it in an intellectual and logical and reasonable way, um, very measured way with Saturn that's going to, um, like I said, damage control in terms of belief systems. There may be some serious relationship issues, Gemini, that um, are going to go through um, an upset during this two weeks, but I assure you that it's everything is there for your own, um, not only your own growth, but even more importantly for you to step into um, a, a very important role in your public persona and, and, and your ambitions and goals, right? There may be, there may be relationships, Gemini, that you've been holding on to that finally just need to be released so that you can free yourself and, and the, and Mars and Venus, um, in the eighth house coming together. And then also, um, having that sextile to Neptune is also, like I said, a recompense, um, a balancing of accounts. And when we're talking about accounts in the eighth house, we're definitely talking about uh, business accounts, um, marriage resources that are shared. You know, this, if you've gotten a divorce, perhaps there is about to be a settlement. You know, this is the idea that then frees up resources towards your, um, your mission, right? And so, or there is, you're getting a huge return on some sort of investment. And again, it's giving you resources right into the spiritual nature of your mission or your goals or ambitions. So, um, it's not going to be easy for Gemini, but it's also setting you up for a really strong professional, um, experience. And especially as we are moving more and more into Pisces, right? I mean, everything other than Pluto really is going to soon move into this area. So also be aware that by March and April in particular, Pisces or Gemini may find a lot of expansion and activity in their career. So everything leading up to this right now is, is part of that. So now Gemini, I think we're going to come to a close. So I, um, you know, if you are interested in a reading or energy work to support your process, you can go to my website, catalystenergies.net. That's in the description box below. You can just link right to it um, and check out my services and what I have to offer. You can also um, support these types of videos and content by going to Subscribestar and subscribing to um, Catalyst Energies for $3 a month. That's also linked in the description box below. You can come hang out on Telegram. And until next time, Gemini, take care of yourself. You have an important role to play um, in the larger scheme of things right now that you are being set up for. So everything here is to help you and to teach you even when it's difficult. So um, with that, I'll see you on the next video, Gemini. Peace out. Mm -hmm.